Hello from My Robo. My name is John, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a simple robot with my new ARPS2 board. Let's take a look at it. ARPS2 stands for Arduino Robot Project Shield version 2. There are four user push buttons, four LEDs, a piece of a speaker, an analog temperature sensor, some voltage divider resistors, an expansion header that can hold a sonar module, an infrared demodulator, servo connectors, and a motor driver beside the screw terminal strip that allows the battery and motors to be plugged in. And then there are also these breakaway optical floor sensor modules that we can use to turn into line sensors or floor sensors. To make ARPS2 into a robot, we're going to need some other parts as well. I'm going to use an Arduino to control it. This is the Arduino Uno R4 Minima. We're going to need to have some sort of a platform to mount everything on. I've just got a piece of scrap wood here. And then I've 3D printed some motor mounts and an Arduino holder. And I'll have the links to that in the description below. We're going to need some motors. And these yellow gear motors are inexpensive and readily available on the internet, but they're not very good. This type of little gear motor is much better and has grippier rubber tires. Much better than these that go with the gear motors but I understand how cheap these are and that you might want to use them. But the, one of the reasons they're not good is that they use a lot of current. And um, something like this motor, this GM8 gear motor from Solar Robotics, is a much lower current motor with a much grippier tire. But the cost of these in Canada is about $9 each, plus the wheels, and these are about $3. So I can see why people would use the cheaper ones, but it really isn't that great. There's also differences between these two. You might be able to see the difference in color. They have a different gear ratio, so you'll need to be aware of that. So let's get started. We're going to solder some wires onto the motors and start assembling everything. I'm going to start by assembling the motor mounts. Put the screws into the mount from the outside. Next, we'll solder wires onto the motor terminals. Pre-tin the wire first. After stripping the insulation with a wire stripper, twist the strands back together. And then add some solder to keep the wire strands from fraying apart. This will make a much stronger connection for you for later. The stripped end of the wire is now too long for the motor terminal, so cut it down to the right size so that it doesn't short out to the motor casing. The motor terminals are very sensitive and easy to pull out of the motors, and that will break your motor. So I'm going to attach the wire this way so that the insulator is over the metal shell of the motor and then I'll be able to strap the wires down to keep them from pulling out later. It helps if you tin the motor terminals first. Here's what it should look like when you've got the first one done. Now you can add electrical tape or a cable tie to keep the wires from pulling up. There we go. That should be nice and strong. Now that the motors are mounted, I can mark the locations of all of the parts on the wooden base. I'm going to need to mount the battery pack and the Arduino and both motors.
Okay, next we're going to break off the breakaway optical floor sensor modules. And then I'm going to trim these other little pieces. Now I'm going to line up my floor sensor modules with the edge of the robot. I'm going to mark the mounting holes and also use a sharp pencil point to mark the locations of the leads of the phototransistor and LED. This way, I'll be able to drill right in between those holes to mark the center of the optical components. Okay, now I'm going to install the optical sensor module on top of the holes I drilled for the optical components. They'll go in later. Okay, now we'll look at the symbols for the phototransistor and the LED. It shows which way each of the pins goes, but in this case, we're going to put the long pin of the part to the square pad. We'll do that by inserting it through the bottom of the board. Make sure the wheels are off and then push the optical components down so they're laying on the table right below the chassis. Depending on the chassis thickness you might have to adjust the height of them. Solder the LED and phototransistor in place Here's how they're aligned, and then trim the leads. The robot's nearly done. I've got some short extension cables to connect the optical sensor modules, and I've got a sonar module that will go into the front of ARPS2. But first I'm going to hook up the battery and motor wires. Battery comes first. Positive is the first contact, then the battery negative, then I'm going to hook up the two wires from the left motor first, and it doesn't matter which order they go in, if the motor runs the wrong way we can either reverse the software or we can reverse the wiring. and I'm going to wire up the right motor the same way as the left motor. There we go. We've now got a robot capable of sensing the floor and sensing obstacles in front of it. Let's write some code to test the sensors and the motors. I've connected the Arduino Uno R4 Minima to my computer and opened the robot starter program in the Arduino IDE. This program is designed to help you test ARPS2's optical sensors and motors, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. The first part of the program is known as a program header and contains comments and information about the program, as well as pin constant and variable definitions. The pin constants assign names to every I.O. device to make it easier for you to create and debug your programs. To light up LED2, for example, I can simply use its name in an output statement. I don't have to remember to look up the pin number every time I want to use it. On ARPS2, the motor pins are shared with the LED pins, so turning on M1A, Motor 1's A pin, also turns on LED2. Below the pin definitions are some variable definitions which are used to store the state of various ARPS2 inputs. The pin and variable definitions get the program ready to run, and the first part of any Arduino program to run is the setup function. 
It typically contains statements that set specific pins as either inputs or outputs and initializes variables on hardware devices. This program is set up for my Arduino Uno R4 Minima, which is a newer Arduino and can use the faster serial communication speeds. If you're using the older Arduino Uno Rev3, comment out this higher speed serial begin function and use the lower speed one instead. The pin mode statements configure the push button switches on ARPS2 as inputs, and the LED and beeper as outputs, and even make the beeper play a short tone. After the setup function comes the main loop function. Every time the loop runs, the first thing it does is read all four push buttons and store their states in the push button switch variables. All of the push buttons work with the Arduino Uno R4 boards, but if you're using the older Arduino Uno Rev3, Switch 2 and Switch 3 won't work because their I.O. lines are shared with the serial port, which is needed for USB communication. So if you're using an Arduino Uno Rev3, you'll need to change the program to use only push button Switch 4 and Switch 5. Each push button was configured with its pull-up resistors enabled, so the normal state of the pin when the push button is not pressed will be high. When a push button is pressed, the pin goes low. These if statements are set up to do different functions for each push button that's pressed. If a push button is pressed, we know its input will be low, and its if statement will then call on one of the four motor functions to run the motors. Right now, I have switch two set to make the robot go forward, switch three and four set to make the robot go left and right, and switch five to stop the motors. Let's scroll down a bit to take a look at how these motor functions do that. The first one is the stop function, and it writes a low output to each motor driver output pin to connect all of the motor pins to ground and keep both motors turned off. Next is the go forward function. It writes a high to terminal A of motor one and low to terminal B of motor one. This means that terminal A will have the full battery voltage applied and terminal B will be connected to ground, which will end up running the motor in one direction. Motor 2's outputs are reversed. Terminal A of motor 2 will be low and terminal B will be high, so if both motors are electrically connected the same way, motor 2 will spin in the opposite direction of motor 1. The reason for running motor 2 in the opposite direction is because the left motor has to spin counterclockwise to make the robot go forward while the right motor has to spin clockwise since it's on the opposite side of the robot chassis. Notice that there are three more motor functions, go left, go right, and go reverse. None of these contain any digital write output statements yet, but you'll be able to add them once you know which output levels on each of the motor driver pins will make each motor go forward. Let's look at the rest of the main function before we try the motors. The rest of the main function reads the two analog phototransistors and then prints their values to the serial monitor. Next, it reads the voltage divider, does a voltage conversion calculation, and prints the battery voltage to the serial monitor. The 50 millisecond delay at the end of the main loop limits the number of times the program loop runs every second. Slowing it down so the loop runs 20 times per second will make it easier for us to see the analog input values as they're printed out to the serial monitor. We'll need to reduce this delay after testing so the robot can respond to changes in the floor sensors more quickly. Let's try reading the analog levels first. You don't need to have any batteries powering your robot to do this. I'm going to upload this program into the Arduino by pressing the right arrow at the top of the Arduino IDE. When I do that, the program will first be compiled and if there are no errors, the compiled program will get uploaded into the Arduino microcontroller's memory. Did you hear that beep? The beep indicates the Arduino is running the program. The tone statement we saw earlier in the setup function did that, so we now know the program is done setting up all of the I.O. and should be running the main loop. Let's click the serial monitor button in the IDE to see the transistor values and battery voltage. There they are. It doesn't matter if the two phototransistor values are different from each other. What does matter is that the phototransistor values change by a significant amount when we lift the robot off the table or change the lightness or darkness of the material under each line sensor. Notice that as I lift my robot off the desk, the values increase and they get larger by a few hundred. As I put the robot back down, the numbers decrease. Knowing the expected values for the floor or for the lack of a floor or for a black line, 
will let you set a threshold value in your program to detect all of these different things. You can then use these values to have your robot detect the edge of a desk or stairs or the presence of a line on the ground or the outside border of a sumo ring. The voltage value isn't showing anything right now because I don't have my batteries installed yet. I'll do that in a moment. Pressing switch 2 is supposed to start the motors, but the motors won't actually turn without the batteries. The LEDs will still light up since they share the motor driver terminals on ARPS2. Okay, pressing switch 2 turns the two motor terminals on. Pressing switch 5 turns them off. Everything seems to be working, so let's put in the batteries and test the motors. The first thing to notice is that the voltage printout in the serial monitor has gone up. Even though this is a 6 volt battery pack, the voltage readout from the ARPS circuit will be lower than 6 volts due to a voltage drop across the Arduino's built-in protection diode, but the full 6 volts will still go to the motor driver circuit on ARPS2. These are also rechargeable batteries, so their voltage will be lower than alkalines. Pressing switch 2 should now run the motors. Wait, they're running backwards. No problem. I'll turn them off with switch 5 and then change the code in the program's go forward function. I have to swap the high and low outputs for each of motor 1 and motor 2's terminals in the go forward function to change the direction of the motors for my robot. But before I do that, I'm going to copy this code and use it to make my reverse function, since I know it made the motors spin backwards. Now I'll swap high for low and low for high in the go forward function, and then I'll upload the code into the robot again. Okay, pressing switch 2 now makes both motors go forward. Looking back at the program, it will now be easy for me to figure out the go left and go right functions. On my robot, motor 1 is the left motor, and motor 2 is the right motor. So if I want my robot to turn left, I'll have to make motor 1, my left motor, go in reverse, while motor 1, the right motor, goes forward. Doing that will result in the fastest kind of turn, but that might not be the best kind of turn for what I need my robot to do. I'll explain why. There are two other ways to get the robot to turn left, other than turning on the spot. I could stop the left motor while running the right motor forward, which will keep the robot moving forward while turning instead of turning on the spot. And this might be better for a robot that needs to get through a maze or to its destination more quickly, because its forward motion does not completely stop while it turns. I could also have the robot turn to the left by stopping the right motor and making the left motor go in reverse. This kind of turn might be better for a robot exploring the real world, because it allows it to back away from the edge of a table or the top of a staircase to prevent it from tumbling over the edge. You'll have to decide what kind of turns are best for your application and write that into your turn functions. Or you, or you could write a turn function for each of the three kinds of left turns or right turns, and then you'll be able to choose the kind of turn that works best for you. Okay, now that I know my floor sensors are working and, I'll, and I know how to turn the robot in any direction, I'm going to quickly modify my program to make my robot drive around on a table without falling off. If you've built a robot with floor sensors, see if you can do the same. Next, I'm going to add obstacle sensing using the ultrasonic sonar distance sensor module, but I'm going to do that in another video. Please like and subscribe to see more beginner robotics and programming videos. If you want to get an ARPS2 circuit, they're now available in kit form and as a bare PCB from the myrobo.tech website and my new Electron store. The links for both are in the description below. Until next time, keep learning.